This is the device that I use to remove things from the crevices. <laughs> and we can check what's in the crevice right now. Oh, it's three contact cases. <laughs> so I use this to fish out things that fall in the cracks. There's another one back there, but I'm not gonna bother with it right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've lent this <laughs> to a lot of people. One guy actually came running around Creek Pasture asking if anybody had a clothes hanger, and it turns out that he had an Astro van and he dropped a banana into the door and it was stuck inside of the door and he used this to get it out. And I think two other people have used it to get their keys out of the car. So I would say number one van life tip, get a metal coat hanger or two or three and keep them on hand at all times. <laughs> My name is Allison. I grew up in San Luis Obispo. two years ago now and I've been in there on and off since then. This is where I live. It's pretty fancy. It's not big but it's mine. This is my bed and that's about it. That's the whole tour. And I think that what really made me want to live in the van is like I was going on all these trips when I was still in school and meeting people who were like doing that full time and living out of vehicles and climbing all the time and they were all so much happier than all the people I was going to school with who were just like on the grind, ready to like graduate, move to Seattle, get a job. And I was like, mm, I'd rather do this. My bed is massive. It's 28 square feet. I figured when I built it out, I'm mostly gonna be sleeping here. So I might as well just make the whole thing a bed and I have no regrets. So I bought the van from a used car dealership in Compton where all the cars were $6,000. It was like, you just walked in and you're like, which one do you want? They're all the same price. And my dad came with me and we test drove some of them, picked out the minivan. But yeah, I thought we were really weird because we kept opening the back and like having me lie down in the back of all the cars. <laughs> and this was like in Compton, he was like, hmm. Under the bed, usually this is mostly clothes, but right now it's transitioned to just my winter things and like some supplies and books. So I didn't actually build it out for quite a while after I first got it. I took out some of the seats, had it up at school, and then I went to Yosemite and worked a job there for a summer. When my summer job was ending, in the valley, I went to my parents' house with the minivan, ripped out all the other seats, built it out in like three days, which was really exciting. I'd never done construction before. And I was using like some fun tools. I forget what one of them was called. Like you could use it to grind through metal. And I was like, I had built everything into the van and so all the metal things were still sticking out and I needed to grind them off but it was like shooting sparks all into the synthetic interior of the minivan and I was like this is maybe not how I was supposed to do this. It has this fancy latching system here where you can clip this in the carabiner. It helps you practice your clipping technique. Yeah. And then it stays up and doesn't smash your head. Water jug, shoe basket. I got my hat rack. Here's the hat rack. I got it at the 99 cent store. <laughs> One of my best purchases. So that's the front. I've been supporting myself by working seasonal jobs in the summer and fall and then hitting the road, usually in the winter. Just recently started trying to do some freelance writing, which was pretty fun. I got a lot of really silly jobs writing weird climbing articles for people's blogs. But I found out recently that if you work for yourself, you have to give the government back 50% basically of your profits and taxes. And I only made like a thousand dollars freelance writing this year so I'm kind of second guessing that career pursuit. I made these curtains. They kind of suck but you know we make do. And then I got my storage net up here. It's sewn into the fabric of the roof and you know I got twinkle lights. They have eight different settings. Seven of them are party mode and one of them is regular. <laughs> so this summer I worked for the Mono Lake Committee I got a job as the canoe program coordinator, which is a really fancy name for I lead canoe tours and return people's phone calls. <laughs> then moving to the back of the house, 
I have this bike rack that weighs 100 pounds and has turned my clearance to two and a half inches. It's very convenient, <laughs> but it holds four bikes, so. My favorite part about living in a van is that you have the freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Like you can have your whole season planned out with like this really specific schedule and then you meet somebody that you really like climbing with and they're like, I'm going here and you're like, oh, okay, and you just cross everything out and go there and it's like, you can pretend that you've planned out your life but when you live in a van you don't ever have to follow that. This is my back storage area. I have this fancy setup going on. In here I keep all my climbing stuff, which right now is all in my backpack, so it's not here. These bins are for food and cooking supplies. My least favorite part about living in a van is that my build-out does not include a kitchen, which, you know, I think in a minivan it's hard to do that right, like have a kitchen and a sleeping space that's comfortable, so I don't necessarily regret not putting in a kitchen, but it does mean that like there have been times where it basically rained or was ridiculously windy for almost three weeks straight and during that time I really pretty much subsisted on hummus and French bread baguettes and I would just like lie in the back of my van in the library parking lot eating baguettes and wishing that I had another option <laughs> so I'd say that's probably the worst of it and worrying that like if your car breaks down that's your house that's the other part it's a little scary and then under the middle panel i store things that i almost never use snow gear or books i've already read that i don't want to give away because i'm a hoarder honestly i don't know what's in there i haven't opened it in months <laughs> i like to spend like long periods of time in one place so i'll go to like indian creek for a month and a half the valley for a month and a half i seem to get stuck in joshua tree every year for like three months pretty much my van life traveling revolves entirely around climbing and like hanging out with my friends who are climbers a lot of my gear goes in the roof box up there which is a little off kilter because it might be broken. I have like my backpacking stuff in there, my wetsuit, camping stuff, the stove. I started climbing when I was in college. My freshman year I took beginning rock climbing and I thought it was dumb. Looking back I don't really know how that happened because then like the following summer I started bouldering in a gym and I like immediately thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then when I went back to school I started climbing outside with the climbing club and then I was like oh the gym is stupid. So it was really like a lot of transitions and how I felt about climbing. But that's where it all started. Then we've got the passenger seat. I thought about removing it and putting a kitchen there, but I was like, you know, that seems a little antisocial and I don't know if it's a good idea. So we're keeping that for now. I love climbing, who knows why. They like are fit like ski goggles and so they get all fogged up when I get hot. <laughs> so when I was like cruxing out on the first pitch, my like goggle glasses were just totally fogged up. And I was like, it's fine, I can do this. <laughs> I'm just like dripping sweat out of my eyeballs. Sometimes I look back at like my formative years as a trad climber in Yosemite and I'm like, how did I like that? Like I would just get so scared, like to the point where I thought I was gonna pee my pants on like 5'7", trying to protect the whole climb with nuts. Like a big part of it I think is the community. Like I feel like I just found my people, but also standing on top of a peak and knowing that you felt like you were gonna throw up like half the way up the climb and then you get on top and you feel better than you've ever felt in your whole life and you're like, okay, I guess I can't really explain why I do this, but it's cool. <laughs> that was not good. Right now, the future is up in the air. I am finishing my seasonal job here in about a month and I decided to apply for one job for the winter and if I get it I will probably take it but if I don't I'll just keep dirt bagging so I kind of see like seasonal van life as a thing that I can't imagine giving up maybe ever I have no idea where I'm going next I know that I'm spending the month of October in Yosemite Valley but after that I have no idea I think that I should take this opportunity to talk to the world just for a minute about red cabbage. <laughs> I know that Kaya already knows how much, like, how strongly I feel about this subject, but I feel like red cabbage is something that a lot of people don't think of as an interesting vegetable, but it's like, it will change your world, especially if you're a dirtbag, because red cabbage will last for about a month unrefrigerated in the back of your car. And it's like the most beautiful vegetable you'll ever see. When you cut it open, it looks like a maze and it's purple. 
you can <laughs> put them on anything. <laughs> like tacos, salads. I eat them plain, <laughs> like an apple. <laughs> so yeah, that's my parting dirtbag wisdom is like, if you're not eating red cabbage, you should be.